And then I look back at my life and I'm like, these are the things that that allowed me to do. If these doors are closed, how can I combine this whole diaspora of my life into, into creating these, opening these other doors? So I was like, oh, I completely forgot I have a business to get. Everyone DJing. Cool. You want to DJ for Fashion Week? That's great. I'm gonna go DJ uh, for, for fucking Google. You want to, you know, you want to DJ Can Film Festival? Dope. I'm gonna go DJ Can Lions for the ad Test because they pay better. So the question is this: How do thought leaders, school dropouts, former and current students find out what's next after they do or don't cross that stage? If you want to know the secrets to starting the career or business of your dreams, getting paid whatever you desire, and discovering what you do the best with the least amount of effort, then this is the right podcast for you. I'm Sean Anthony, and this is School's Over. Now what? The podcast. Yo, we back. We back in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, if this is your very first time checking out the show, I'm your host, Sean Anthony, and I appreciate you guys so much for rocking with us. But I will be doing you a disservice if I did not tell you what it is that we do on the show. Each and every single week, we continue to bring you an inspiring person or a message that is truly going to change the way you not only view education, but also how you may possibly take your business to the next level. Each and every single person that's been on the show has answered the question we have all asked ourselves at some point in our lives, and that school's over, now what? And this show has been one of the top 100 business podcasts available on iTunes. So if you're listening to this right now, I am grateful for you. I am grateful for your reviews and all that you've done to help us continue to impact more people. And with that being said, let's kick this thing off with the review of the week. And it comes from Growth Season. And she wrote, listen, friends, if you want to keep it real, keep it smart and listen to amazing guests. This is it. He's helped me personally, professionally, in tangible ways, y'all. Sit back and drink it in. Grow season, I appreciate you. And I like the fact that you have a podcast and you put it out there and you always have my support, guys. And if you feel the same way and this show has impacted you in any way possible, be sure to scroll down to the bottom right now. Click that five-star rating and leave that review. As you can see, it's helped us do tremendous things. Also, guys, don't forget every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. You can also catch us at Fuel by Culture going live with some amazing people. So stay tuned for more and more impact and more things all about culture and nothing but value. With that being said, here's a quick word from our sponsors. Are you thinking of starting a business? You're going to need a website or do you have a business but haven't updated your website in over two years? Then you need to hear this. Olive Branch Digital will help you create the website of your dreams. They are masters at turning your ideas to responsive websites that get picked up on Google and all the major search engines. Stop wasting time trying to learn the code and visit olivebranchdigital.com. Mention the podcast and get 10% off your website project. This episode is brought to you by www.patreon.com slash schools over now what? For as low as $5, you can help us impact more people, tour schools, and reach communities. You also get exclusive Patreon-only content. That's bonus episodes, early access, and be able to go behind the scenes with me and some of our guests. Visit www.patreon.com slash schools over now what? And become a patron today. All right, let's get into the reason you click that button, right? You click that button for a reason. Today's guest, I I want you to take in what I'm about to say. He's worked with the likes of Jay-Z, the Obamas, Prince, Twitter, Instagram, LeBron James. I mean, the list goes on and on. I I don't even think we got enough time to to just go through it, but let's keep it all the way 100 with you guys. This guy is phenomenal. He's done these events with them and taking them to a whole different level. Today's guest on the show is none other than the Nick Batiske. This guy is more than a DJ. He's a tech investor. He's a style uh, ambassador. I mean, he's somebody who's a brand curator. And you're going to enjoy this episode because we're going to dive into so many topics that are needed to be heard right now. 
Ladies and gentlemen, grab your pencil, grab your paper, whatever that is for you. This is one you're going to want to make sure you're taking notes of. Episode 108 with Mick Batiske. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. I'm with my guy. You already heard the intro. This guy's a legend behind the scenes, and he's somebody that you need to pay attention to right now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mick. He's on the show today. How's it going, bro? Hey, man. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me. Hey, man, you know what's crazy? I know what people always see is this highlight reel, right? Like, people can look you up. They can Google you. They'll know, oh, you've done events for, you know, the Michelle Obamas, the Princes, you know, so many other celebrities. But what I like to always do on the show is take people back to the beginning or where they're from. Yeah. Tell us about, you know, your upbringing and coming up as a kid. Um, I grew up in Ohio, uh, south of Cleveland, a town called Youngstown. And... um. Then I moved to Cleveland for college. But as a kid, um, I, I mean, I don't know what aspect of my youth you want me to talk about, but to be timely, you know, I grew up in a very um, non-diverse environment. I grew up in a very, uh, like, white suburb. And uh, I grew up also, like, exploring and loving, like, a whole, a whole bunch of shit, most notably hip-hop and basketball. So I was also, like, interest, you know, I was interacting with, diverse diver, diversity and um i don't want to say virtually because we didn't have computers then but like you know and and so all of that stuff uh, through me through media and then through um music and then that music became a, a passion that became a job as, as life went through so i went from you know hearing um hip-hop in fourth grade and then in middle school to like that made me want to play instruments so i started playing drums and playing piano because I was just really interested in, in, in music. And that literally came through hip hop. Like, I mean, I obviously heard music before hip hop, but it, it, that's what grabbed me. And that's what taught me about music because I love rock music and I love jazz music and I love classical music and I love all that stuff. But hip hop to me was like, I would learn about all the other genres of music through the prism of hip hop because of the samples and what people used. So when I would listen to like, Tribe Called Quest, or I'd listen to like you know um, Outkast, or I'd listen to like the Beastie Boys. Like I would, I would be looking at the liner notes, and I would be learning. Oh, you sampled these five records, or you sampled these three records, or you sampled these four records. And then there was no Spotify and shit then, so I had to go actually find. If I was lucky, I could find the CD somewhere. If and if I was if I was really lucky, I could find the vinyl at like some flea market or at like my my mom's collection or my grandma's collection. And so I pieced together music knowledge through hip hop research. And then I pieced together musical skill through like, I was in high school doing like marching band and jazz band and, and all these things. And then somehow all of that shit coalesced my senior year in high school. Secretly, I would come home from school and DJ. And nobody really knew. Like I would do like high school dances for people, but I would use like CDs and cassettes and stuff. No, I wasn't like a, like a hip hop DJ. I was just like DJing and they gave me like pizza and shit. And then, <laughs> All of that shit kind of came together. And then my freshman year of college, I moved into my dorm with two turntables and two crates of records. And that was a complete reinvention for me from like June of, um, I won't say the years, but June of my senior year. <laughs> and, in, you, know, fre- you know, September of my freshman year, that three-month gap for me was, was a um, magnificent rebrand. And it's changed the course of my entire life. And now I get to be on your podcast. I guess it worked. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Like, like you say, you know, growing up, you know, you're playing, you know, instruments and like your fourth grade. Well, you paying attention to certain beats that you'll say when you look back, like, you know what? Maybe I caught on to, you know, putting mixes and things together because some of those things I learned back playing those instruments. Were you, were you catching on to some of those beats? Yeah, for sure. That's crazy. Something I did a, I did a photo, right? Um, <laughs> Cause I love that we have so many mutual friends. Like I was like, oh, I said, I want to send people the phone. Yeah. Uh, also, your your audience can't hear it, but I'm I'm drinking really great wine out of a really bad glass. So I'm really glad this isn't a video <laughs> podcast because I like people always like you have the best wine, but you're always drinking out of shitty plastic glasses on your lives. And I'm just like, so send me some glasses. Like you know, where's where's that crate and barrel sponsorship, right? Like <laughs> where's the, like like that? Nobody calls for that. But anyways. Um, so, yeah, of course, man. Like, so I remember distinctively, you know, the album that got me into hip hop in the first place was um, Jesse Jeff and Fresh Prince. He's a DJ, I'm the rapper. And there was one song specifically, and if we were doing a video <laughs> podcast, I would open up my desk drawer like I am 
and you can see it. I'm sh- this is the actual cassette that I bought in fourth grade. That's and I reference this. I'll, I'll shake it so people can like hear it maybe. Um, it's, I reference it in almost every interview I've ever done because it changed my life. And there were lots of great songs on it that I loved that were commercial that got me into it. And then there were tons of great songs that were just like super like lyrical and funky. And there was tons of like shit where Will was just like freestyling. So I learned a lot about the culture from that. But the second half of that tape was all like break beats and like like shit for the DJs and shit for the breakers and all of that stuff. And I didn't know. First, I didn't like it because I was like, this isn't the song that's on MTV. I don't get this. Where's the rapping? Where's that? And then I was like, whoa, this is cool. And so I started looking up that shit. And so whereas like it was cool to enjoy the first half of the tape, which was all the rap shit, the second half of the tape was like me hearing Jeff cut up like Sherilyn to be real or hearing him cut up like what I didn't know at the time was like uh, Incredible Bongo Band Apache, which is like a classic drum break that zillions of people have sampled over the course of like, I mean, it's probably like the one of the three most sampled records of all time. And uh, outside of like James Brown and, and George Clinton, it's like outside of those two like pillars, it's the record. And um, I was trying to find those records and find those songs. And I, so I learned a lot about like, you know, for me, it was, I realized at that point too, I was, you know, I was gravitated towards like the music over the lyrics. Mm-hmm. And even now as an adult, um, as an adult DJ, I guess a grown man DJ, I don't remember lyrics. I remember a lot of lyrics to shit that like changed my life that like I love, 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 but I don't remember a lot of the lyrics to songs I play like when I'm DJing. If I don't, unless it, I mean, if it crosses like over from my brain to my wallet to my heart, it's like a three prong system, yeah. right? It starts there, you know, because it's a book to job, right? Once it gets to my heart, I remember all the lyrics, but like there's so much music out, I don't, I don't. And, um, I guess what I'm saying is my brain doesn't go to lyrics. It goes straight to music and rhythm and samples and syncopation. So the point I, I reference with those lyrics is maybe I don't remember like the lyrics, the words, but I remember like the syncopation. I, I remember the lyrics almost as an instrument. Yeah. So like, I might not remember say I'm going to make up a lyric. Just doesn't even make sense. Just like, like the dog ran across the street. I won't remember that, but I'll remember like the pattern of the da, 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 da. Yeah. And if the guy was like the dog ran across the street, but I uh, like, like some DMX shit, like yeah. I, I, I remember like the da, 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 da. So I hear it like that. So when I'm DJing, I'm able to like, remember like, Oh, I got to cut the music out here. So people can say some shit or like, this is the end of the bar. Or, but I don't actually know what the fuck they're actually saying. And it's it's pretty interesting in that way. Um, yeah, that's and uh, I don't know where that, I don't I don't even know if I answered your question. Yeah, yeah you did. But that's dope because you, you, what you gave the people right there is how you listen to music, and the way you listen to music, it sounds like you're listening more to the flow of it. Like you listen to yeah, the flow yeah, yeah. of it, and trying to figure out, you know, all right, this is the part that's going to make the crowd go like this, or this is the part that they're really going to like. Let me slow this down a little bit. It's art, bro. It's art, and I think that's so amazing that you're able to pay attention to that. And you talked about when you were in college, like this gap where, you know, things, some things obviously happened for you, right? I want you mm-hmm. to like elaborate a little bit about what was some of those breaks. Somebody right now is listening to this and they're waiting for signs of a break. What were some of those breaks that you felt like you were coming your way when you were in college? Um, well, I believe you have to make your own breaks. First of all, I don't believe, I mean, there are definitely people who have not made their own breaks, but I believe most of us, us, us civilians, us non superheroes, we have to make our own breaks. You have to make your own luck. And I believe you do that through hard work. And I believe you do that through being a good person and treating people well. And I believe you do that for like, you know, just trying to work harder slightly than more, more than the average person. And then I also, I have a big spiritual component to, to what I do as well. And, and I believe that's why I've been able to like, you know, be an old man still somehow being able to support my kid through a pandemic, you know, because of all, because of those aforementioned reasons. Going back to your question though, um, I think for me, the first moment of like luck or fortune or opportunity, however you want to look at it, that happened to me in college would be, well, actually I could tell you, um, my, and he's still one of my really good friends to this day. My, I could have, when I look, when you look back at life, right you get placed in opportunities that you don't realize you're there and you get there for a reason. And, and, and when you look back at your life, you can see connections that you didn't really see happening at the time. I was actually just talking to a friend of mine right before um, we, we recorded this and we were talking about the, the connections of life. And she was mentioning how depressed she was last year. And this year, like, you know, she's so glad she went through that shit last year because if she was that way this year, she don't know what the fuck would happen with 
this 2020 shit. Yeah. But we were talking and we were just like, you know, I mean, I think about, and I'll go back to your question, but I was, I was thinking about how life gets connected like that. And I'm like, man, I remember a couple months ago when Kobe died, but that was like the only bad thing that happened this year. And we were like, man, this is crazy. And the first thing I wanted to do when Kobe died was like, hug my kid, call my family, call my friends, be still, be loving, be caring, uh, look inward and just realize what's really important. Cause we watched a superhero die at the peak of his powers. Right. And that's yeah. rare. We didn't, we didn't have, uh, our generation didn't have like Elvis and JFK and all that shit. Like, you know, we didn't have like, like or we didn't, Marvin Gaye. Like we didn't, mm -hmm. we didn't have, we don't have those. Like we have rappers that like overdose and shit, which is horrible, mm -hmm. but it's not the same. This was the tragedy of like, you know, this was a different thing with the kid and all of that stuff. That made us so empathetic and so so deeply internal about what's important to us that it changed, I think, for a lot of us, how we view life and society. So then when this pandemic happened, I think it prepared us in order to be smarter about life, be smarter about family, be smarter about the values that we hold dearly. Maybe it's not just about having to do all this shit when you're stuck at home. Maybe it's not about having to just get on a plane for the gram. Like maybe it is about just sitting on the couch with your fucking cat and watching the last dance, right? And just holding those moments quiet, right? right. But we got all of that. We, I think I think I think the Kobe thing put us in a placement to, um, and obviously like there are a million other things too. But like I'm just, when I look at 2020 as landmarks or tem temples, that like those are like it's like Kobe, Corona, George Floyd, and then God knows what the fuck else is about to happen in the next six months. But then I look at like how Corona prepared us for the whole like the whole protesting thing and all of that. And it drew all the attention on the same shit that's happened for fucking 100 years. And it's probably going to happen forever, but hopefully less. And but it drew attention to it more now. Like, what's the difference between this one and the ones, the hundred other ones that happened in the last year and the 10 that's happened since then? Right. The difference was everybody was dialed in on it because Corona slowed the world down. So like. The Kobe and all that shit brought us to an emotional core to interpret Corona in a way to make us hopefully better as a people. That gave us the emotional capacity to try to deal with the, the Minnesota situation in a, I mean, in a completely different way than mankind has ever reacted to anything in life. And that hopefully will allow us to prepare for the aliens and Ebola and whatever the fuck's about to happen in July because July about to be crazy. I don't even if we, if we make it to August, man, that'd be it's fantastic. Crazy. It's been crazy. So, so I look at all of those, I look at the, that series of connections, right? Because I'm a very big uh, stoic philosophy kind of person where obstacle is the way. And what I just described were three horrible fucking tragedies that all somehow have gotten easier to accept because of the tragedy before it, right? And it makes you hope that like whatever we're getting from this current bullshit is like going to prepare us for the next bullshit and the next bullshit and the next bullshit. And by bullshit, I don't mean the guy dying. You know what I mean? I mean the the act of the violence and all that, the, the, yeah. the crazy, right? Just the just just to be clear. Obviously, you know what I mean. But like all of these things prepare prepare us for the next thing. So when I look at my life going back, I'm like, how do uh, I didn't mean to get all like deep and worldly right there, but it's just like I, I, I think about I think about that a lot as a man and as a father, like the, the interconnectedness of of all of these things. So I look back at my life to your question, and I'm like, hmm. Has that ever happened in, in, in my career and in my life and in my personal life and professional life that has enabled me to, you know, and so the first thing that happened for me, okay, and I don't think I, you know what, I'm going to tell you something, I never realized this shit until like right now. I, wow, this is actually, this, you're, this is like mind blowing. I just thought of something because I, because of, because of what I just, what I just said. So I was a super fucking loser, like in high school, like no friends, very little friends. I was like, not nerdy enough to be a nerd, but I wasn't cool enough to be cool. And I was just in that middle ground where like the cool people still talk to me, but they didn't talk to me after school. Yeah. And the nerd people like, like fucked with me in school because I was smart, but I didn't get to go to like your, their little nerd shit because yeah. I wasn't actually a nerd. You know, I was just, I, so I was a floater and there's nothing worse than having no place. Right. Mm -hmm. So because of all that, I had very actual real friends. I had fake friends, like nine, 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 nine to five friends, eight, what school, eight to three. <laughs> and so because of that, when I had to go, to college, I knew I was starting to fall in love with DJing, right? I chose, and it cost, like, I think it was, like, I mean, at that point, in this world, it's negligible money, but I think it was like $100 more a month or something at the time. I chose to live in a dorm room with one roommate versus a suite at two rooms with two roommates each. That's how, that's how the dorms were set up at my college. Okay. Because I felt so socially 
awkward that I didn't want to be in a situation. This is me thinking about this when I was in high school. Not in, when I got to college, I blossomed because of DJing and because of like a new environment. But because I was so, I, I hesitate to use the word persecuted in high school because there's there's real shit going on. But because I was so just not accepted in high school, right? That made me want to choose a situation where I, I, I could thrive and I knew I had a better odds of thriving if I only had to live with one person than live in a, in a situation with three or four people. And so because of that, they put me on a floor that had a lot of rooms that were A, bigger, and B, like um, they put me on a certain floor. What happened with that was the A, the room was bigger and that enabled me to actually bring my DJ shit. Okay. If I was in a room with the, with the four people, I wouldn't have room to bring my shit. Or if I did, I wouldn't have been able to like set it up. Like I w- it would just been like, you know, I could have put it in a room obviously, but like I wouldn't have had the autonomy to do what I want. Cause I only had to control one person. I'd be like, nah, fuck you. Like I'm putting my shit on this desk. Like do your homework downstairs in the study lounge. Right. Yeah. Like, like this is what we're doing. And I had, he, had, and, and if, if I wouldn't have been able to do that in a room with four people. So a hey, obstacle turning opportunity. Secondly, my RA resident assistant for people who, who haven't been to college or whatever, he, to this day, one of my one of my really close friends now, but at the time he was my he was like a superior. Yeah. He was like a huge hip hop head, and he had like rock him vinyl, like shrink wrapped and shit. Like the, he was, I remember telling me, like, "I'm gonna give this to my kid one day." Like he had a shrink wrap one, he never even opened just to give it to his kid. And now we're like adults with kids, and like we could like laugh at that. And now he's like actually he became a doctor and he's a DJs for fun. But he was like, "Yo, I fuck with you. You want to be a D- this is '96. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm 42." This is rare. This isn't now where everybody's a DJ. This is 96 Cleveland, all white school, white kid, white RA. So this is a rare, a very rare occurrence. Super I got rare. matched with the perfect RA that said, hey, I'm going to let you play that music loud. I'm not going to write you up. I know you're in that room, so you got the room to actually do that shit, where most of these kids don't have the room to like spread out and set all this shit up. Not only that, like I'm going to introduce you to some people so you can go downtown and get some records from the record store. Instead of like, you know, because how else would you get, there was like no digital at the time. Yeah. Then he was like, I'm going to introduce you to my friend at the radio station so you can get a college radio show, which he did. Then I got the show. And then he was like, because he's my RA, when I had to do that show over like Christmas break or like Easter break and all this stuff, when the dorms were locked, he let me, he would let me in the dorm like the night early. Like if school, if my show was like a Saturday or, and he would let me in the dorm like, they had to come back because they were the resident assistants, but the rest of us didn't have to come back till Sunday. He would be like, come in Friday or come in Saturday. I won't tell him about, it. you know what I mean? Just keep the lights off so I could do my show. All of that shit gave me my career. My career gave me my life. My life gave me my kid. My, you know, my career gave me my friends. Like all, they gave me everything. And I look back at that shit. Right. And I'm just like, man, and I never thought about this till right now, that whole dorm room match with them. But like, if I didn't have to deal with the fuck I had to deal with in high school, a, I wouldn't have developed musical skills. Because like that, I, I didn't have anything else to do. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to people's house to play basketball. I wouldn't go to parties. I had nothing to do but we'll go home and work on music. And then when I looked at that, that gave me that opportunity. I could have been, I mean, I don't, if I was on one floor up or one dorm over, this shit might not have happened. Because he might not have been like, hey, you need to meet this guy. Thanks. You know, and I, and I might, my life might be better for all the fuck I know. But more likely than not, it would be way worse. And, and um, so when I look at it, I do believe that you make your own kind of like, you know, scenarios like that and you have to take advantage of them. But I, but I think you have to be open to what the world is presenting to you as well. That went really long. I'm so sorry. Yo, that was I hope you got, I hope you got editing skills. That, that, was, that was game though. And I, because at the end of the day, what Mick just told you is there are certain things that's going to happen in your life and you're going to look back and realize, yo, that's why I was in that situation. Because when you're going through yeah. it and when you're in the mix, you don't know why, you know, you didn't pass this class or you don't know why you didn't get that job or you don't know why, you know, yeah. that person you try to reach out to didn't pick the phone up or why that relationship didn't work and you end up in better yeah. situations. So you like you really broke that. You know why you missed that flight? All of those things, man. Like I mean, I've had that happen a zillion times in life where, where things happen. You know, sometimes it takes five, ten, fifteen, twenty years to figure it out. But and that's why, like, that's kind of the mindset I use with my kid. You know, he's five. He's really coming to awareness. He's really coming to consciousness now of like stuff, and he needs to, you know, he needs to grasp that. So that's I, I, I you know, I want him to learn from you know, experience, my experiences. 
Yeah, man. So like, like with, with your kid, because there's people listening to this right now, you know, myself, we have children. Like what have been some of your biggest lessons that you've learned by having a kid? I know they have to be eye opening, right? So what's been some of those lessons? Oh, wow. Jesus. So many, man. I mean, one, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I can't get into because of because of legals but like one is like work really really hard man because like like i'm i'm, I'm my kids like 100 percent financial provider all right so i don't have the luxury of taking a day off taking a minute off really right especially now as the world is shut down yeah and i don't i, I just don't and, and I mean, maybe one day I will, right? But I don't. Like, I have to, I have to provide for this dude for the next twenty years, and it's like there's no backup for providing for him. So what I've learned is like, how do you actually do all the work you need to do without wanting to like blow your brains out in the process, right? Because like, we, I'm living for a multitude of, of of humans, right? Not just myself. And life is life is a lot. And I'm in a career, I'm in a non-traditional career. I don't work at Goldman. I don't work at like, you know, Chase. I don't work at, I don't, I don't have a, my business isn't thriving in a pandemic. My business is fucked in a pandemic, you know, like a lot of businesses, right? Like I'm not out of business. Like I have a lot of friends that literally lost their companies and lost their jobs and lost their stores and lost their brands. That hasn't happened. But what, what I have learned was that, you know, in regards to my, my kid, like, I've learned to value money and sanity as equal equal forces, right? Um, I'm not saying I always do that correctly, right? And I still will this to this day choose money over sanity. Not not that I'm insane, but you know, money over like like you know, I always feel like I'll get my my time to chill on the back end. But as we related back to the whole Kobe Corona Minnesota situation like who really knows if there's a back end right we don't know we don't know we, we really don't know but you, you'd like to think and so I, I for me it's like okay yeah I I, I, I realize what that what the flight attendants always say like you know put your mask on first and I never understood that concept but I'm starting to right because I work I work really 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 hard for my kid and, and and, and then now he says things to me like, which are really amazing to me. He's like, you know, can you put your phone down? You know, and I'm just like, wow. You know, and I'm like, well, can you put your fucking iPad down, bro? And he's just like, bro, bro. And then we go into this whole like thing. But he's, it's true, right? Yeah. But it's not like I'm on my phone, like DMing girls. It's not like I'm on my phone buying sneakers, especially in a fucking pandemic. Ain't nobody going to see him. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I'm literally trying to like finesse life in order to make sure he's good but it's like isn't it better that he's actually good now for me to have the life to finesse for him and so those are the kind of like things that he he inspires me on right because is it better you know when i was in school my philosophy was always like i could get an a easily pretty smart dude but i'd rather get like 85 and experience life because if i didn't do that i wouldn't have a career right like i'm smart enough to walk in any class I get a B. A, I have to do the, the work, yeah. right? Right. But B, I can, I can get a B. I'm not saying any class. I can't walk in like a heart surgeon mm-hmm. class. You know, I'm just, like, it's college, basic college shit. Not like, you know, fucking birds or shit, but, or astronaut shit. So I was like, wow, okay, maybe that's, the, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not experiencing life right now like I should be. Like, this is a rare moment. This is a moment where my career is kind of on pause and it's just kind of like a gap and my kids come into like this golden golden era of like life. Like, he's right, right? Like, like I would much rather lose, have a, you know, even, even, even with the world's paused like right now, I'd much rather lose 10% of the income, the minimal income I'm making right now yeah. in order to experience these moments with him on a 110% level. Cause it's not like I'm not, I'm not, not getting 100%. Of course I'm getting a hundred percent. But when he said that, I'm just like, man, my kid deserves more than hundred percent. Maybe he deserves 110. So I'm happy to take, take a little off, off of the shit I need to do. Right. Yeah. And give that to him now. But it took him to say that for me to really realize that. And it's the same thing. So I'm kind of like, Oh, this is my kind of theory with college. Like, all right, the world's kind of positive. I'm going to give work 85, 85% now. I'm going to give work. I'm not going to give you a, a game me right now. I'm going to give you B, B to B plus me because 
if anybody deserves that extra 10%, I'd rather give it to my kid right now. Because I don't know that I'll have this level of time with him when world, the world comes back. I'll be traveling, I'll be like, their shit will come back. So let me love this fucking moment, especially as he's about to be five and coming into like his own. Because these are like those prime years. I'm never going to get that stuff back, you know? And so it's kind of, it's kind of awesome, man. And what happened was that joy and happiness that that's provided me in those, by doing that, has filtered back into my work. And filtered back into my energy, and filtered back into my conversations with people. And it's, I don't want to say it's like made the money up, but it's definitely made the energy up and it's made the, the positivity up because it doesn't matter how many people like maybe don't tune into my live or how many people maybe don't respond to my email or how many checks don't come because their company went out of business because of this shit. I am approaching it from a much higher level of, of joy and peace because of what I'm learning from my kid. And so shit doesn't really phase me like that. And so that's kind of fun. That's, that's, that's an awesome response and answer. Cause what you're talking about right now is that you're finding the, the most important things in life is truly living life, right? It's not truly good. Yeah, like yeah, like sure. Going for that, that, that a, you can get an 85 It's truly going through the process and realizing, yo, there's a purpose and my purpose is my kid or that my purpose is making sure that, you know, they have everything they need in the future. So I think that's a, a real crucial, but amazing answer. And it, it leads me to, to think right now during COVID, a lot of people that are stro- struggling right now is because they don't have personal brands. And I, I know you're a big guy when it comes to yeah. personal brands. A lot of these people right now, their personal brand was, was either that job that they currently work at, a personal brand. You know, if you go back to like your mom and pops days, you know, people used to run around. I know where I'm from. They used to say, Oh, I work at, you know, I work at this. I work at John Deere or like they, they never really take in consideration of that. They are yeah. in control of the yeah. driver's seat. And I think if you have a personal brand right now, I think that personal brand is going to shine at its highest because what I like about COVID-19, that's the only thing I can say I really like, is that everybody's on the same. I was like, what? What you like about it? <laughs> everybody's on the same playing field, though. So, like, so that person that you was looking at, yeah, like, I don't yeah, care very, if, they, if, they, if they popping, if they hot, they was always around traveling, going across the globe. People who, that you kept looking at, you know, you sometimes you kind of resent yourself that you're not in certain situations or you're not traveling. They're at home like you are. They're doing, you know, live interviews like me and you. You guys are on the same playing field. So while you're on the same playing field, yeah. it's time to focus and level up. So that's why I, I was saying I, what I like about it. But what I like about, you know, just you in general is that you've been able to use your personal brand to do more than just DJing. So how important has it been for you to elevate your personal brand and keep reinventing yourself to where I see you speaking on stages? I see you, you know, investing. I see, you know, being somebody that people look at to build themselves up. How do you continue to do those things? Um. As, as I'm ordering buffalo cauliflower, because I decided to randomly go uh, vegan during this uh, pandemic, which has been a <laughs> completely eye-opening experience. Um, you know, it's funny, I'll, I'll answer your question, but I'll start it with, with an interesting point. You, you mentioned this, the speaking thing, which is something I, I truly like love to do. And, I, and, I, and the reason um, I do it is because I, I love to teach and I love to educate and I love to help people. And I actually posted a video two months ago of me talking at a, at a conference and I did, I myself realized I wasn't um, doing the things I say. I watched myself. I didn't even recognize the person that was talking. Like, I, like obviously like physically I did, but like mentally and emotionally, I didn't even, I was like, I don't even know who the fuck that person is. That's not who I am right now. And uh, so I just started making a bunch of changes in my life. Like I gave up alcohol for like a month, which I obviously got back because I'm drinking wine right now. But I went vegan and I just started like, thinking like life different. And it kind of reset me, which I think was a blessing because I need to like, I want, you know, this is, this is a, this is a fulcrum of our life right now. Like we're on it, you know, we're on it. Life was forever altered. So yeah, I want to be in a different zone as, as like Swiss would say for the rest of my life. But, you know, um, as far as like personal brand stuff, personal brand doesn't necessarily have to be what you do on Instagram or what you say you did in like a book or like, you know, what people think you said because of a magazine article or what you rap about in a song. We've all had personal brands since, you know, I mean, you know, G- Jesus had a great personal brand. Like yeah, the Bible, the Bible is a whole book of personal brands, right? Yeah. Like, right. Like, you know, it's just it, 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 this is not this is not a new concept. Right at all, and, and, and 
just to even single out Christianity. Like every, every, whoever, every religion's like guy has that or, or or girl, whatever. Like has a has a brand. Like that's what people follow. We build these personal brands, and then we all kind of get off of them as, as well. But it, now you get off of them because of because of social media and because of like the twenty four seven optics. But like you don't ever think like let's let's let's. I mean, we got go, going with the assumption that like historical books are real and the Bible's real, which is obviously open for interpretation. If it's real, you don't think God or Jesus ever would like look at people was like, "What the fuck?" Of course he did. You know what I mean? Like all like. But could you imagine, like, well, this dude's walking through, like, fucking Israel, saving people and touching robes and healing babies. He was like, what the fuck are you wearing? You don't think he ever thought that shit? Like, of course he did. Fucking of course he did. Of course he did. If he was a real person, you know. But the difference was, the difference was, like, Mary and Joseph weren't there with the fucking camera phone. Right? right. And so, like, that, that, that's, and so we have to be mindful. I don't know if anyone's ever told that story, but that's, I guess, you know, that's going to be. That, that's a wild that's a wild comparison but it's true and it's true in, in, in zero bc and in ad and it's true with in, in during world war one and world war two and it's, it's true with fucking jfk it's true with mlk and fucking malcolm x and you just watched the last dance and you saw all that shit mj did and none of that shit would fly now <laughs> none of that shit would fly now none of it that's facts it flies because they edited that shit now and made it look like it did. None of that shit would fly now, now. Yeah. And so personal brand is not a new concept. It's just a more curated concept because of the world that we live in. And so I think that's very important to remember as, as we're living our lives. And it's a matter of finding that balance of how do you live your best life while also living your best life? Right, because your best life to, to, to your to your customers, to your fans, to your friends, to your family, to whoever is different than what your best life is for you. And I feel like now in my life, I figured out a way to like live at that like at that that equilibrium between them. Like my personal brand of the Instagram world is two hundred percent authentic to my life, but it's not all my life. Hey guys, so let me take a guess. You're enjoying the show. And if that's right, please make sure that you take a screenshot of you listening to the podcast right now and tag me at Sean R. Anthony underscore. I promise you this is going to help in amazing ways. And while you're at it, hit the five star rating and subscribe. With that being said, guys, let's get back to the show. I don't have a fake on, on social. I know a zillion people who have fake lives on social. I don't have a fake life on social. You just don't see all the bad shit. But the real shit that actually happens to me is real. But I had to get to a certain point where, like, you know, life life was able able to me to present that. And I'm glad I went through my warts and through my bumps pre-social, right? Because I'm glad that my life can now present positivity and opportunity for people, right? And there's tons of fuck shit in my life daily that I never put on my shit that I wish I could, but I just can't. Yeah. But, you know... I, I think that, like, the authenticity of, of – of, actually, you know what's interesting? I think it's fascinating now, the last couple of years, when IG put stories into their shit, that now you kind of are able to see both sides of somebody's personal brand. Because when it wasn't just – now, you know, it's still just about the grid, right? Yeah, yeah. But when they allowed stories and killed Snapchat, basically, and, and allowed you to show 24-hour disposable real-life stuff that didn't have to look great. Um, you know, and again, this doesn't really, these, these metrics of like looking great don't apply to us, like, you know, a lot of people, but as a business and as a brand, they do, right? You people want to see the aspirations, but they also want to see the humanity. They don't want to see the humanity though at the expense of aspiration, right? Yeah. But they want to see the humanity. So if you went straight humanity, like I wouldn't have a career because nobody's going to pay me a shit ton of money to go DJ for an aspirational brand. If, if my life looks like, you know, it's nothing but my, my kid fucking throwing clothes in a hamper and my cat shitting on the kitchen floor. <laughs> That's not going to fly. People need to see that other shit. They need to see, but, but they do like to see the chink in the armor. As long as the armor is on, yep. you have to have, you got to have the armor to chink in the first place as a personal brand. And so that's kind of how I approach it. Like I'm going to give you all the shit cause, cause it is real, but I am going to show you the other stuff now too, because we have a way to show it in a disposable, still curated, but less, 
you know, important way. And I love when people see that because like, I just try to make sure my shit aligns because it's all true. Mm -hmm. But I love, I love, I love when people see like, you know, like I, I remember doing a photo shoot with my, 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 my uh, apartment that, my, you know, I live in, in Brooklyn. It's, and it's, I like kind of, I kind of like how I decorated it. People, people fuck with it. And it looks like that in shoots. And when people see it on stories, it don't look like that shit at all. <laughs> You know, it's like me drinking out of plastic cups, a fucking train set that goes through like three rooms at a house. Like, it's just like a disaster. And, and, and people call me like, do you ever just clean your, and I'm just like, nah, like I don't really do it, but, but it's real. And so it's, 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 I like the fact that people were able to like call me out on it, but it's also like, it shows both sides of authenticity. And I think that that's important. You have to inspire, but you have to be able to like, be relatable at the same time and you have to like reach down to the people when you're inspiring them because if you're in a position to inspire you have to never forget that you were once one of those people i'm not trying to put humans on tears but i'm saying like if you look up to somebody that person was didn't start there never you know i was a college student i moved to new york with no money i literally you know i, I have all these experiences you know by, by no money i mean like two months like runway, which in New York is like, I mean, in, in the Midwest where I'm from, that would have been like years, but like in New York City, it's just not, you know? <laughs> and, and so I think it's very important to, to, um, to show people that you have grown, but also show how you've grown and show the warts along the way. And I think that's like the benefit of what social is giving us now. I don't know where it goes in the future, but right now I think people, especially with the events of 2020, I think people want to see both sides. You know, because you saw it, you can't just be out here like flossing, like you're living your best life on April 1st when the world's done. Like, if you were, nobody cared because everyone else was stuck in their house. Like, it's great you have the PJ. Cool. You know, I'm waiting for, I still ain't been on a fucking PJ, but it's great you have it. But, like, we're stuck at home, you know, so it's just like that, you're, that shit means nothing if you don't have the, um, the other shit to, like, balance it out. It's the same thing with, 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 you know, what's going on right now right now with the whole black lives movement thing like black lives matter thing like the move you know it up on my words if you don't have human content in your life actual real shit to show nobody really cares now we'll get back to the point where people are posting sneakers and people are like well, obviously the world's gonna like go back to some the, not not the normal where it was it'll go to a new normal i think there's always gonna be a level of mindfulness moving forward with everything but you know what, what were you supposed to you know everybody who makes a living from posting you what are you gonna what are you you're gonna post last, last three weeks. Your fucking nails, or like you know, you know, you're 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 you're, you're, you're definitely posting not posting a Virgil shit. Like you know, after what he did, like like you know, what he posted. So like, if you don't have, if you didn't have a hum humanitarian basement to your house of of social to a brand, you you know, you, you better be silent. Yeah. You better your blackout Tuesday better be like a month. Because nobody cared, and, and, and as they shouldn't, it wasn't right, it wasn't real, and it wasn't authentic, and, and, I, and a lot of people got, got called out on it, right? And, and, and I think that that hammers home the value of what a, what a personal brand really is. Yeah. It needs to actually be personal. It needs to be real. You can inspire, you can floss, you do all that shit. That's, there's, that's important in a lot of ways. It is. But you got to have the other shit. And for people who go all the way to the left with it, Meaning, like, like the the aspiration, in, in, you know, in the lies and all that, that will come back and bite you in the ass. And it came back and bit a lot of people in the ass in 2020. And yeah. um, that's my lesson to people. Yeah, man. Yeah, and that's so, and it's so real about you. Just gave so much knowledge in terms of just personal branding. It's been around, right? It hasn't changed. It's been around before the BC's days. And what's so crazy too to me is that you really touched on something that it, that a lot of people notice, right? People notice what people have been saying about Black Lives Matters. We, we've noticed what people have put up blackout photos and they really haven't said too much and they even looked awkward doing it. And at the same time, I think what's so crazy is that they're noticing they're missing diversity on so many levels of their team or their shows or, and, and I think now, like you said, it's going to be a new different type of normal, which I think is, is so important. What would you say for somebody right now listening to? I, ho I hope so, man. I really hope so. I sincerely hope so. Yeah, man. But out of doubt, like, what would you say though to like, like somebody's listening to us right now, right? And they're, they're, they're still contemplating, you know, on how they should show up. On social media, we're talking about it, right? Like, like someone's contemplating. What would you be? What would be you know? Mix advice 
right now, someone's like, I don't, I just don't know what to do. Like, what would be your advice right now at this time? You mean in regards to like the, 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 the racial stuff and all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Posting all stuff. Or, or just in general. Just in, just in general. A lot of people like, I mean, I mean, I guess I don't fully understand your question. Do you, do you mean in regards to like what's happened in the last two weeks? Yeah. Or do you just yeah. mean like moving forward? Or? Yeah, it's so like in the last two weeks, a lot of people, you know, they've gotten quiet. They haven't said a single word. Some people are like, oh, what's, ha- what's happening? No, right. no, 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 no. Like, what would be your advice on, you know, coming out of that shell? Right. Well, I mean, I'm the, I don't I don't ever want to be a person to give people advice when it comes to like situations like like you know that I I mean I can only show by my actions. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to like you know I you know it, it's that's a that's a hot that's a hot bad item of that I'm not touching. But but I, I can show you what I do. Yeah. Right. And and, and and the reason I say I'm not touching that because like I know right from wrong, and a lot of people either they don't because they just choose to ignore it or they weren't exposed to it or they don't understand it. They're gonna have to figure that shit out, but yes, like me, me telling you to figure it out is gonna make you figure it out. But I hope that they see. Like for me, I'm grateful. I just I did a, um, a conversation with a couple um, a couple people the other day. Actually, they did. Um, I can't I can't talk too much about it, but they did a, um, a special on on, um, on on white people in hip hop uh, who have uh, been you know allies to the culture since we've been in it and I was grateful to be chosen for that. And it was like, they were like legendary people from like the eighties and nineties. And like, it was, it was pretty great. And, um, I realized, you know, when I was talking like my whole life has prepared me to be a dad right now to a black son in this moment. And I'm not saying I have all the answers. I don't have any of the answers, but I'm much, I'm so, I'm so grateful for, everything we just described over the last hour to have happened to me and for me and, and, and with me because man, I, 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 I have knowledge that I wouldn't have had. I have perspective that I wouldn't have had. I have the greatest group of friends of every color and every hue. Most of whom are black to help me raise a black son. I have a, you know, a career that surrounds me around diversity and provides me to live in a, great neighborhood but also a very diverse neighborhood which was like a huge thing i set out for and why i've stayed uh, where i live in, in clinton hill with my son because he sees everything and, and, and it's great and he's he's going to understand love and and I, and I and i think a lot about that like man how how my life has positioned me to raise my son in, the, in this moment and i'm not saying people could do that w- w- if they didn't have my life of course they can but i'm grateful that like with everything going on I feel like because of my career and my love and my and my hobbies and my passion, I've had like an inside track on how to be what we need to be now. And I'm so fucking grateful for that, right? You know, I'm grateful for all of it because I don't, can't imagine my life without my friends. And I couldn't imagine my life without my kid and all, and all of these things. And I'm grateful now because I've had people ask me, like, you know, privately, like, what should I do in this moment? And I'm far from the person that could be the answer because I'm asking my friends. But but I am grateful that all of this has given me, you know, I know that I have built a sort of like life with 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 friends and, and fam that like when I don't have the answers for my kid, because I'm not going to have them all, especially now in this in, with this stuff going on, yeah. that I can get those answers and I can get that perspective with f- within 30 seconds. Right. That's real. And, 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 and that's. As a dad, man, like, or as a business owner, or as you know, you have to know. You can't know. It's just this, it's the same thing. You have to know when you what you don't know, and you have to not be afraid to seek out what you don't know. That's and as far as being a dad, like I know a lot of shit. Fucking good ass dad, great dad. I, I that's the only thing I ever hear me to my home. Run. Like I, that shit, I kill that shit. <laughs> but I don't know everything, and and, and, and there's going to be things that like I can't experience that that he his, my son is going to experience, and I I have to like look. Thank God to my friends and, and fam for for that sort of like, hey, help me with this, and I'm so grateful that they're there, you know, because. Uh, it's just like there's I want I want my kids to have that 100 percent perspective, not my, you know, nine ninety five point six. Like fuck yeah. that. Like let's go all the way with it because I can give him that because he deserves that and every kid deserves that and I'm grateful for mine. I'm going all over with this, but 
you know so what, that's it that's what it is with, with, with branding for me it's like it's, it has to be authentic you know i don't just brand my kid i brand i don't just brand my life i don't just brand my career i tie all that shit together and you know it comes back in moments like this week i just had a um for father's father's day i don't know when it's gonna air but like not to screw up your your it's timeline it's but Friday, we're in a, you're coming out this friday we're okay <laughs> okay cool like you know i mean this father's day is coming up and it, it's interesting with, with every brand fucking up right now right yeah i actually had a brand reach out to me last week and they were like we want to feature you know the, the i mean i think with every brand taking everything wrong way basically they, they were like the love you have for your son is so evident and we want to feature it and I'm like, that's, you couldn't have written a better sentence to me. Yeah. Right. You just, you couldn't have like, especially now yeah. with everything that's happened this year, because all, all these tragedies this year have all affected me, how I, how I think of him. Um, they've affected my business. They've affected my, you know, all these things. Yes. But they've also affected me. Every single one of these things this year that we went through a zillion times has affected how I, how I, my core as a, as a man. And my core is how I, I look at my, my, my son. And so when they said that, I was like, you know, it's just, it's just funny because I'm just getting email after email of like how brands are responding. Brands responded wrong to Corona. Brands responded wrong to Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. And there's a commercial. You could Google it. Every, every, every um, COVID brand response is the same. And I forget who made the ad, but it's literally, you should watch it. It's a four minute long commercial of all the major brands COVID responses. Wow. And it's the same fucking commercial. Every commercial has pianos <laughs> and every commercial has the same verbiage from every brand. I'm talking about, I don't remember the brands, but it was literally like every car company, every beverage company, every insurance company, every airline. That's it's right. all the shit. There's, there's a million of these products in your fucking home right now and mine too. And they all Google the commercial. Um, Every, it's there's literally the same song, the same piano notes. It's insane. And that's the same thing that everybody's doing now with the Black Lives Matter stuff. It's the same sort of like t- I, some of it. I don't want to say tone deaf because I don't I don't know the person's intent who wrote it. Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to go so far as to say they're trying to be that. But it's the same stuff. So with all of these things going on and all these brands trying to like overcompensate and do all this stuff. When I get an email from a brand that, like, when all I care about is my kid, who happens to be black, who happens to be my son, who happens to be alive in 2020 and the most fucked up year ever, and, and I get an email from a brand that was literally like, we just love the love that you have for him. We want to rock with you guys. I'm like, done. That's I didn't have to read no more. I didn't have to read anymore. Because they, they, they hit me in a place that was like, not even 100% authentic, like, like a thousand million percent authentic, right? And so, I think if more brands do that, A, and reach, how they reach out to clients and reach out to customers, mm. B, how they re- respond to catastrophes and tragedies and global pandemics and, 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 and movements and everything that we're going through. I know my cat's trying to drink this wine. You can't drink wine, dude. Um, you know, I think the world would be a, a better place. So I, I, what I do hope is that for people who are trying to, like, figure out what they should say – you know, I would rather be, I guess it's kind of like that, that 85% thing before. I was talking with some friends about this yesterday. Is it better to try and fuck up if your heart's in the right place? Or is it better to, like, get it right, but but your heart's in the wrong place? Mm. So I would rather, like, you know, I definitely over-texted some friends when, when all this shit went down. Who was like, bro, we got to just, just give me three days. Yeah. come back to me and I'm like, you're right but like you're right cool but my heart was right too yeah. right and so it's just like i would rather be told like yo give me three days cool and then we'll go get coffee in three days and it's like because i know that my I'll, I'll take that 10 out of 10 right i have i'll happily be checked for having my heart in the right place rather than like not care at all yeah. and, and and so i think with the with brands and stuff like that too you know it's the same thing like if the people who did try to do it right um, or, or got, got it close and got it course corrected, they're going to learn from that and, and move on from that. And hopefully we hope apply that shit moving forward to, to just be better. Now there's tons of brands that fucked it up and they got called on and they're going to be dead if they canceled forever too. Yep. That's fair. Right. But if, I would rather think like the ones that try to do it right. And, and the people that have tried to do it right in anything, whether it's this current situation, whether it's COVID, whether it's 
you know, the Tyson fucking chicken factory that has like a million food contaminations and it, like Chipotle three years ago with the, what was it, salmonella or whatever. Like there's right and wrong ways to respond to all this stuff. And you got to like own it and you got to give a fuck about it. And if you don't, then, you know, you might skirt through. Yeah. But eventually, like someone's going to call you out on that stuff. And I would rather be called out on something for actually giving a fuck than being called out on something for, for doing it, you know, for not giving a fuck. Yeah, that's because then I, I can still I can still rest easy at the end of the day, you know, knowing that my heart was in the right place, and that's the mind state that's got me through business, it's got me through college, it's got me through fatherhood, it's got me through, you know, failed friendships, current friendships, future friendships, like that, you know. Yeah, that's real. Eighty five percent. I'm going to write that book. Yeah, <laughs> I would need you to write that book. That was a real answer, man, and I think you added so much value in this interview, covering just those topics that you just mentioned. And it's, it's so much to unpack in the answer you just gave, because if you walk by step by step and speak from the heart and come from a genuine, authentic place, that's what people respect the most. I want to ask you the question, Mick, we asked every single person that's ever jumped on this podcast. And that is, if you were asking yourself the question of the show, if you were just crossed mm-hmm. the stage or whether, you know, you dropped out of school, and you're asking yourself, school's over, now what? What advice would you give? The first thing I would say is congratulations on finishing school, right? Because my impetus in life for being able to follow my passion and follow my career was knowing I had a plan B. I have an opposite theory than most people, which is like, you know, fuck everything, fly by the seat of your pants, figure that, you know, we'll just go for it, go for it. You know, if you don't have a plan B, you, you have to focus on your plan A. I don't, I'm not wired that way. I'm wired like I know I have a plan B. So I can go balls to the wall extra hard with my plan A because I can give it that extra 10%. Like, cause I think like if you're giving it all, that's cool. But like, you, you know, that I, I don't know for me knowing that like I had a backup plan enabled me to go even harder because I could give you that extra bit that might really make me fuck up even more, but it's okay if I fuck up. See, it was for me, it was okay to fuck up because I knew I had a plan B. And so that, and that, but, but because I gave it that extra, like 10%, right. That extra like booster rocket, that's what enabled me to win in the first place. So that's the first thing I would say to people like, congratulations, you're, you're halfway there to following your dreams and your dreams could be what you went to school for, or your dreams could be for some whole other shit. My shit is some whole other shit. And then I look back on it 20 years later, but everything I learned and the mind states I learned all apply. I didn't know when I was 22 and I wanted a DJ for fun that I'd be self-managed at 42. And I didn't know that I'd be able to be on a business podcast at 42. When, when I was 22, my teacher told me I was fucking up because I was being creative. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that's just wild. But that's true. That's what happened to me. And so all of those things kind of like coalesced and worked, and worked in my favor. I look at it back to everything we just talked about, whether it's like how my life experiences enabled me to raise my son better, how all of the, all, you know, like, like college experiences enabled me to do better business dealings. Like all, all of these things have really played, played a part. So that would be the first thing I would say. And you know, the other, the other thing I would say is like, um, be open to like everything, man, because the shit that I do now to make a living did not exist 10 years ago and it certainly didn't exist 20 years ago when I graduated college. And so if I wasn't open to where life was taking me, then I would have never been able to achieve and accomplish what life had for me. Mm. And, and that to me has been key. If I would have just never thought my hobby could do this for me in the first place, maybe I would have never figured it out and I, and I wouldn't have the life I have now. And for me, it's also just like, you know, I mean, this is past your question, but those things I said got me kind of into the middle of it. And then I think the other thing for me is like, I had to learn what my limitations are too. And I had to learn what my, my areas of expertise are. And I had to learn where, what I'm really good at and what I'm not really good at and what audience really resonates with me and what audience really doesn't. And so I had to like hone in on that. And that enabled me to like extend my career and, and, and move into like other areas that a lot of DJs haven't really tried to fuck with. But, you know, for me, it was like, okay, yeah, I'm never going to be like the coolest nightclub DJ and I'm never going to be the guy. Like I'm not going to be like the 42 year old white DJ breaking rappers right now. Like that's that I did that in my twenties, but that would look crazy right now. And nobody's looking at me for that right now. And if you did like, 
I can't even help you. I can't even take that money because there's that's just like I'm that would be wrong. Like I there's nothing I could really do for you at this point with that. So I was able to like be like, but I can't, but I, but I want to be that person at that one time. I can't be that. I'm not really good at being that person. Or this door won't open for me. This, so what will? And so I looked to try to find like the hidden opportunities of like, okay, if I can't do these three things, and not saying I can't do them, I could do them, just not like A level, yeah. and not even 85 level, but like I could do them, of course. I'm but I could, I'm a competent human. I'm able to take when the door shut. I could rebound. I could rebound that and shoot it the other way and be like, okay. But this is really strong. And then I look back at my life and look back at my education because this is about school, yeah. school related question. I'm like, okay, if these were things that inspired me in college, and then I look back at my life and I'm like, these are the things that that allowed me to do. If these doors are closed, how can I combine this whole diaspora of my life into into creating these, opening these other doors? So I was like, oh, I completely forgot I have a business degree. Everyone's DJing cool you want to dj for fashion week that's great i'm gonna go dj uh for, for fucking google you want to you know you want to dj can film festival for, for the actresses dope i'm gonna go dj can lions for the ad execs because they pay better you know you know what i mean and so i was like for me it was a very i can't stress enough the, the stoic philosophy mind state the book I've, I've given to 100 people the obstacles away by ryan holiday it's the best book i ever read it informs my whole decision making process for like life and everything in life from the beginning of this conversation even from is, has become something that's benefited me if you choose to optically phrase it that way from the nerd in high school to you know you name it right and uh it's all it's all led to who i am now and you know i'm so grateful for it and that's what i would say man that's a crazy good answer man and it, it, it pays all these different things we talked about together, man. So I appreciate you so much for being on the show. If people want to learn more about you right now, where can they find out, you know, where are you hanging out at? Just give them the information so they can find you. I mean, I'm just at the crib, bro. There's not, there's nowhere to hang out. Anymore. I mean, I've seen a lot of people without masks right now. I just want to say that because I'm sure you have a great audience. Like yeah. people are fucking idiots, bro. Like this shit is not over. Not over. Shit is not over. It's not over. The weather's nice. Wear a mask. You're out there protesting. Wear a mask. NBA season is going to return. Social distance. Like all of these things are going on. Like let's not forget the fact that like they just said today more people have died from this than World War One, and, and and we haven't even done what's the first wave. It's going to happen again. And it boggles my mind that like people are outside. I literally walk around and like three out of ten people don't have a mask on, and they're just chilling. And I'm just like. So this is just a PSA for me. Please be smart. Like, like this shit is not done. Not and, done. and let's all let's let's be here to. Uh, I have friends that have been in ERs and incubate, intubated and all that shit because it's like this is not done. Wear a fucking mask. It's just a mask. Get a go. Get a dope mask too. Like get some fly shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like right. Yeah. Like there are people on Etsy right now cutting up fucking Gucci bags, turning them into masks. Like if you you if you have the money. Beef, go get that shit. Get some two chain shit. Like I'm sure he has <laughs> the best mask ever. But get it, because this shit is not done, right? And it's not gonna be done for like two years. And and, and the sooner people keep fucking up, like it's gonna like no one's gonna be able to go to my party. Nobody's gonna be able to go see see you live when you do something. Yeah. Nobody's gonna be able to do shit. Like <laughs> sitting outside right now at a pizza restaurant just to sit next to somebody eating a slice of pizza without a mask is not worth hemorrhaging your next two years. So because of all the non-mask wearing motherfuckers, I'm still at home. So you can find me on Instagram only because I'm not, you're not going to see me in public anywhere right now. <laughs> so because of those fuckers. But um, it's true though. It's like, where do you live? I'm in North Carolina. Where you okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what is it like down there? I mean, it's the same thing, man. I got like 20 masks. I got masks everywhere. I got masks in the car, but as soon yeah. as you go to anywhere, I don't care if it's Target, I don't care if it's the gas station, they out here with no mask at all, man. Wow. It's wild. I just ordered a new coat rack just for my masks. Oh, you got a lot of like, them. <laughs> I got a lot because I, I, I got like I got like three or four, and my kid got like three or four. And so I'm like, where are we going? We were hanging on. We, I mean, first when this shit started, we were hanging them on like my bike. Yeah. And I'm like, but I'm like, damn, like you got to wash them every day and you got to wear them. Then, then it was like, you know, when it started, it was like cold out. And now it's like hot. And so like the masks that I had and like, March, they're like flannel. Yeah, that's what dope. I look like I was like, like, yeah, yeah. It was like some fancy like flannel. I look like like a like a if Pearl Jam made a mask. Like it look, it was just like some crazy shit. And now it's like 
now I'm like trying to run and it's like 85 degrees. You can't run in that. So you gotta have you gotta have like an assortment of different fabrics and let it breathe. But I'm like, it's wild. Like if you would have told me in January that I'd, I'd have to get a, a you know a coat right. I mean I get you know, but I bought the bootleg one. I got it on Amazon. It was like 23. Like I didn't go to like design with the reach and get like the real shit. Yeah. Like the first time in my life I was proud to buy a bootleg because I'd actually when these when this Corona's done, I'm ripping that shit off the wall, and throwing it away. Like <laughs> I, that twenty three dollars is gone. Like I don't want I don't want the real I don't want the I don't want the real one. I have I have like the really fancy coat rack. Yeah. And then I got the bootleg generic ass one because I want to rip that shit off the wall as soon as this is done. But <laughs> Anyways, we like, we going with I I think you can get you can get more of all, all this random insight in life on my IG, which is just at Mick M I C K. Very simple, four letters. Um, my website's Mick.co. The process of launching right now, super updated. But the Instagram is really all you need at Mick, and uh, basically just cute pictures of my kid doing whatever the fuck it is that he does, and occasional uh, occasional other moments. Facts, man. And tune into my lives because I'm DJing. I'm DJing a couple times a week, and it's really fun. Oh, can I say one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. Thing. Thing. Um, yeah. We started something really, really cool uh, last week, and we just were finishing it up this week. It was supposed to be a week, it ended up being uh, two weeks. Um, and I just want to shout out all the all the, the DJs who, who took part in this. Uh, you know, everyone's going live and doing all these things right now, and it's great. That's how we all support ourselves. But you know, nobody's really trying to like, like party over the last couple of weeks, right? It's just been, it's been too, too, you know, it's just a, it's a treacherous time. Yeah. So what we did, me and like a, a shit ton of DJs, I, you know, I, I branded it and came up, I, didn't, I mean, I didn't come up with the idea, but Instagram, Instagram created a button in the, in the live for donations, right? That a lot of people are not taking advantage of. And it, it's, it's interesting. They need to market it a little bit better because the key to causing societal change is, making the shit easy for people who don't want to do the work. Yep. And there's a shit ton of people that want to do the work, whether it's in business, whether it's in parenting, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in life. But if you, you can make that shit easy for people, you're going to get 10 extra results. So they created this button when you're in a live where you could literally hit one button to set it up before you press live and your audience can literally press one button to Apple pay that fucking donation. And you could really do some cool shit. And I did a fundraiser for uh, the bail project after all this stuff went down a couple weeks ago because I just didn't really feel right putting my cash app up, you mm -hmm. know. Like, I mean, I'm a, i got to provide for my kids, so that it, it, it will go back up. But, but <laughs> like, you know, right now there's – it has to. I got people – people have to work. Yeah, but at the time, things are things are a little bit more important than that, right? At least for me, I, I had the luxury of being able to not do that for a couple weeks. Obviously, if you don't have that luxury, you got to do what you got to do. But – I put this thing up and we raised a shit ton of money in one night. Uh, we raised, I think the first night I did it like $2,500 for people donating while I was playing songs. Cause I always interact with people on my lives. I'm like, Oh, you want to hear that song? Cool. Yo, go hit that button, man. Five bucks. You know, and we do that. And I looked up and we we're up at $2,500. Wow. And then the next night we did it again a couple of nights later. And again, we made it really easy for people right before I hit live. I just hit fundraiser and hit one and they, and they, and, and, what was great, they actually put all the black-related causes at the top of the list, so it's very easy to choose them. Oh, great. Um, and uh, It's great. And, but also, if Corona didn't happen, this button wouldn't even be there. So like, this is another example of things helping things help, right? You know, bad things turning into good things. So I was like, wait, if I did all this shit with like no promo, I reached out to like a whole bunch of DJ homies all across the country, and we created a hashtag called Mix for Change. And uh, we raised, and it's still going as of now, but uh, we're, right now we're over $30,000 wow. from DJs just going live. Literally, nobody's doing anything. And that's what's amazing, right? Nobody's doing anything different than what they would do. You're pressing one button before you DJ. Fans are literally pressing one button while they're watching you. There's no difference. Everybody's giving you five or 10 bucks towards this ch charity if you remember to do that shit. And the power and numbers of it, I mean, 30K towards all these causes for mm. just for, you know, and, and this is just off of like a whim of some shit we put together last minute. Like imagine when, when the, whatever the next thing that happens is <laughs> we'll be able to do more with some strategy. But like, I don't, I, I'm scared to think of what's going to happen in July and August. But I just want to like shout out the people who, um, the, the DJ community, which is my first and foremost community. I'm in a lot of communities, but that's my first and foremost community. Um, we're a very strong strong tight-knit community regardless even if, if djs who you don't even know each other if you meet another person that's a dj you'll have you have like it's like a fraternity or not i guess not a, not a fraternity but like a family right yeah. you know fraternity and sorority and 
people have really shown up. I was hitting DJs I don't even know, like, yo, this is what we're working on. Are you down? I was like, of course I'll give you like an hour. And, and like a lot of DJs I've never heard of in my life hit me. Like we saw what you're doing and you look up and literally by the power of people pressing one button, we raise all that money. And I'm like, imagine what we could do if we really strategize. So I just want to thank the DJs who are bold enough to do that shit. And for the people who were um, kind enough to tune into our stuff and, and, and actually press that button. Because I know a lot of people, for a lot of people donating five, ten, twenty dollars is easy. Yeah. Especially you, you're balling. Like, see your house, like shit's good for you. <laughs> but like, you know, they don't know we're on the Skype with the video. You got all the toys. I got all. This too. But for a lot of people who did it, let's be real. Like a lot of people who, you know, for everybody that's very easy for them to give a hundred. Yeah. There's somebody else that's really hard for them to give five. Right. And when you go back and you can see all the donations, man, it's a lot of people giving those fives. And you have to really think about the consumer, right? You have to think about their mind state. Anybody that gives 100, that means they just got 100 to give. Mm. If they had to get five, they had to really think about that. Like, if you're giving five, if you're only giving five, you're thinking about, are you giving that five? Can I give that five? Yeah. Because what's going on in my life that I can, you know, like, that five is a much harder gift. I firmly believe this. That five is a harder gift That's true. than the person who can give 100, even though the 100 is 20 times the amount of money. Yeah. Whoever's given that, it's much easier for them to give that. So, like, I just, I'm just like, I'm just like enamored with, with the people that were so generous and so kind to like try to make a moment right now. And it's, it's just really, it's, it's great, man. That's powerful. So, thank you, guys. Check that out, bro. We appreciate you and having you on this show. And for those of you that have been listening, always remember dream it, believe it, go out and get it. Yo, what you think? I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I want to know what you learned. So if you wouldn't mind, would you take a screenshot of you listening to the podcast on your phone right now? Upload to your Instagram stories, tag me at Sean R. Anthony underscore, and then let me know in that Instagram story what is one thing that you learned. I love hearing from you, my listeners, thought leaders, former or current students all around the world. Let me know. And while you're doing this, go inside the podcast app, subscribe, leave a five star review and a five star rating. Again, this helps us reach more people. And if you want to be a part of this mission, helping us change the world one person at a time, it makes a massive difference by you leaving a review. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. And remember, dream it, believe it, go out and get it.